What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Detached Garage. In today's episode, we are talking how to future-proof your garage electrical. Welcome back to a snowy January job site. Today we're talking all about future-proofing your garage and your electrical install. And so where do we need to start? We need to start where the power comes into the building. So let's go check out the meter base and see what we're upgrading. So future-proofing your garage build or your house build starts with where the amps come in. So this is the new meter base. 320 amps is what we're upgrading to. This over here is our existing 200 amp service. You can see this conduit runs underground, makes a 90 and then goes over here. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna energize this service and then we are gonna run wire and pull wire over to this service over here. Once this service is energized, we're gonna take this service down and pull it out and then we're gonna use that existing hole through the foundation to pull this wire through and back feed our existing panel in the house. So essentially the house will become a sub panel to this um, 320 amp service. So we'll have two 200 amp panels. Obviously you can't max it out on 320, but overall this should give us plenty of amperage for any high amp future equipment, such as a hot tub um, or a sauna and EV charger, that sort of stuff uh, with this 320 amp service. Let's go take a look around the garage to show you guys some additional future-proofing things you should do in the rough framing stages. So whether you're an enthusiast or not, or you just want to future-proof the resale value of your home, EV charging is a topic we have to talk about. So with the panel over there, um, one of the big things you need to think about is, all right, where is, the, uh, where is your car going to park? and where do you need your EV charger to go? Because typically the whips from the charger are really only 22 to 25 feet long. And so um, if we're parking over here or if we're parking over here, we need to figure out where that charger is going to go. That is step one. The next thing you need to do is figure out how much amperage you need to run to that EV charger location. So right here is where my EV charger is going to go or EVSE. And what we're going to do is put it right here because it can swing over here and it can also swing to this bay as well to charge this bay. So we are putting in conduit that's going to go all the way around and we are going to just put a junction box in the wall for right now for a hundred amps of power. The reason we're doing that, and you might not think about it, you know, most EV chargers or EVSEs can only go up to 50 amps right now. But what's coming in the future and to future proof your home is putting in a charger that is going to be bi directional. So you can actually use your EV to power your house. And so I want to future proof it. So I am running this as a 100 amp capable circuit that is gonna go in conduit from here all the way back to the panel over here so that we can back feed the entire house with our EV in the future if we need to. Now there's only a few EVs capable of this right now, but that is what is coming in the future. And if we wanna future-proof our garage electrical install, that's what we should do. So now that we've located where the main charger is going to go in the garage, let's talk high amperage outlets for the rest of the garage. So whether you're a welder, whether you want to put in some uh, washer dryer or other high amperage equipment, locating that is going to be critical. So here is where my welding outlet is going to go. And uh, that will obviously feed back to the main panel. But with this same electrical run, we are going to run to the outside as well. So let me take you around here and kind of show you why we're going to do that. So this is all going to be driveway over here. And we're going to put an RV plug right over here, 50 amp capable. So that way, if you have a friend that comes over with an EV and they want to charge, you don't have to pull them into your garage to use that charger. They can just use their mobile charger and hook up. Also, if you do have an RV in this big pad right here, you can park outside and plug your RV in as well. So let's talk general wiring installation in your budget, in your timeline. So as you can see, these are outlets going all the way down the garage here. And so what you'll notice about these is all the wire is run up to the top plate and over and then down. 
And the reason we're doing this is because I am going to leave the walls open for a little while before I put drywall up. And this is another thing about future proofing is I'm still unsure of exactly where some of these things are going to go. So I wanted to leave the walls open for a little bit just to get a feel for the garage, a feel for where things are gonna go and then close them up after we've run everything behind the drywall. So this style of installing electrical is a little more expensive because you're using more wire to go up, back, up and down and over. But what it allows you to do is if you are doing the general construction or you are doing the electrical, you can pass your rough electrical inspection without these wires going across and drilled through and leave the walls open. Now, we are gonna seal this up with spray foam, so I will have two inches of spray foam on the wall, and so that will pretty much take up this cavity area back here, a little bit on here. So if you do need to run some additional wires, it's gonna be a little more difficult, but what it's gonna save you in the long run of not having to do drywall repair if you don't wanna do that or whatnot, it's gonna save you a ton of time and money in the long run if you're still unsure of exactly where things are gonna go along the walls of your garage. Future proofing your garage, so let's talk outlets. So we have installed an outlet box on each column here. And the reason for that is we might eventually do retractable screens here to keep the bugs out. So. We're not gonna do that right away. So I wanted to make sure the electrical was installed in the right locations because we didn't have to rip any finished material off the wall to put this back in whenever we decide to put the retractable screens in. Christmas lights. I know you're probably thinking about that right now. You're actually probably taking them down right now with the time of filming, but make sure you have some soffit outlets. I've got one here and one here to make sure that we're future proofing for Christmas lights. The other thing you're going to want to do is if you are looking at cameras, make sure you run your low voltage PoE or power over ethernet to these locations as well. In addition to electrical, there's a ton of low voltage you need to be aware of as well. Wherever you're going to have a TV, you at least want to have two Cat6 cables running. And maybe if you're gonna back feed uh, some high-end audio, you might even wanna run an optical channel as well. So the lift for me is gonna go right here and my workbench and cabinets are going to go back here. And so I am probably gonna have a TV right on this wall over here. So. Uh, we're still going to put an outlet in there for power and we are also going to run a second box for the low voltage, the CAT6, the optical, and we're going to run two CAT6 and one optical back to the media rack upstairs, which I'll show you in a bit. So the TVs are going to go one right here, the lift, working on any YouTube instructional videos for whatever project I'm working on. Then this is going to be the workout area here. We're probably going to have a pull down weight rack here, but I'm going to put a TV right here. So we're going to do two HD or two ethernet cables, which the reason we're running two is because you can turn an ethernet cable into an HDMI cable. So depending on what kind of video routing you're going to do, that's a great idea as well, and that's why I'm running two. So that TV can fold out and swing over here. So if you want to put um, you know, some rubber flooring down here and do expand the workout area a little bit, we're going to do that there as well. And then we already have the two boxes in for the TV outside. One of these boxes is going to be power. The other is going to be low voltage. So Make sure you're thinking about that as well. All your low voltage stuff, power over ethernet, and even your garage door stuff as well. Make sure the electrician is running your sensor wires as well as your opener wires in the first place. Welcome back to the loft area of my garage, guys. The last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is future-proofing your media and home entertainment. So right here, I have a little area that is going to be accessed through a door that is right here. So you'll come in the door and then over here are two dedicated 20 amp outlets. And so the reason I went with 20 amp on these two is this is right where my media rack is going to be. So you're going to have a high power amplifier for your multiple zone systems. You're going to have potentially a PoE switch. You're going to have a bunch of other pieces of equipment that you don't want to run out of power. And so that's why I did two dedicated 20 amp circuits to just future proof it. I'm probably never going to use this amount of power, but 
at a minimum, if you're doing new construction or if you're remodeling and you're putting in a media area, at least one dedicated 20 amp circuit is a must. You're probably gonna have a power conditioner if you're a hi-fi kind of person, and overall, 20 amp is just the way to go. It's not that much more money to run this additional gauge wire and have that additional rated outlet. In addition to the electrical, what you want to make sure you are going to do is run a fiber cable back to wherever your house is, especially if it's a detached garage. So we are running two fiber cables from my uh, basement area right now, which is where my current media rack is. We're gonna run them across and we are gonna terminate here at this rack. The reason we're running two is just in case something happens to the one. And whether, you know, a drywaller cuts it or kinks it or something like that, you only get one shot to do this. And so I'm running two dedicated fiber lines. Uh, so I'll have 10 gigabit capability syncing from the garage back to my home media rack. We covered a lot in today's episode. We talked about getting the high amperage service to your building. We talked about the high amperage outlets in the building for welding, washer dryer, and EV charging, and especially some tips on exterior EV charging as well. We talked about running the electrical up the walls to save yourself time and money in the long run if you are working on your garage or you're not quite sure where everything's gonna go. We talked about the electrical outlets around the outside of the garage to make sure you have power there. And we also talked about the media rack upstairs in my garage, making sure you have a dedicated 20 amp outlet for that, as well as making sure you route your low voltage stuff at the same time as well before you get that final rough electrical inspection done and then in start installing spray foam. So thanks again for coming along. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments below. And next time we're gonna be installing these magic stairs. Thanks again for watching Detach Garage.